Today, when it would seem that almost all science is looking into the future, archaeologists are still finding ancient artifacts that can change our understanding of the planet's past. In this video, you will see the finds that most influenced the world history of discoveries. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Mount Hizerlik, 1800s an archaeological team led by Professor Rustam Aslan during excavations in the ancient city of Troy in northwestern Turkey discovered a cultural layer that pushes back the estimated date of the founding of this city by about 600 years. Archaeological excavations in the ancient city of Troy, located on the territory of the modern Turkish province of Kanakale, have been ongoing for about a century and a half. Scientists scrupulously opened the settler layer by layer. In total, none of them have been found over the past years. This proves that during its existence, Troy was destroyed more than once by wars, fires and earthquakes, but its inhabitants always restored it. Rustam Aslan's team from Chanakali University found traces of a previously unknown 10th settlement layer. This is an earlier period than what scientists call Troy 1. The new layer was named Troy 0. It proves that the history of the city is much richer than it was thought. So far, the oldest layer found in Troy dates back to around 2920 BC. According to Aslan, the discovered layer turned out to be about 600 years older. In other words, Troy was found around 3500 BC. Megalosaurus 1824 Megalosaurus was the first dinosaur to be explored. Of course, fossil skeletons of dinosaurs were found before, but then science could not explain what kind of creatures they were. Some believe that it was the study of Megalosaurus that was the beginning of many science fiction stories about dragons. However, not only this was the result of such a find. There was a whole boom in the popularity of archaeology and humanity's passion for dinosaurs. Everyone wanted to find their remains. The found skeletons began to be classified and exhibited in museums for public viewing. Megalosaurus holds a special place in the history of paleontology, being the first dinosaur known to humans. But it is still not entirely clear what he still looked like. At the beginning, when the lizard had just been found and there was no one to compare it with, the first paleontologists reconstructed the Megalosaurus as an animal that looked like a dragon with a large head and walked on four legs. And so they thought until decades later in North America, the remains of Theorem pods similar to it began to be found and it became clear that it was a bipedal animal. The head of Megalosaurus was large and art with sharp predatory teeth and in its neck was very flexible. The body was in balance even when the lizard stood on two legs thanks to its long tail. Massive legs held a lot of weight. On the paws there were apparently three supporting fingers and another one sticking out back. The front paws were smaller than the hind ones. They had either three or four fingers. Treasures of Sudden Who, 1939 Sudden Hoo is a barrow necropolis in the English county of Suffolk, which was discovered in the late 1930s and where the most significant archaeological finds in the history of Great Britain were made. Among these finds was a burial ship dating from the turn of the 6th and the 7th centuries. It is believed that this tomb of the East Anglian Ken Redwald and the antiquities that archaeologists have found are amazing. Redwald died in 624 and was buried in a burial boat 27 meters long. It was in the necropolis of Sudden Who that the earliest burial grounds of the 6th 7th centuries were discovered, and it turned out quite funny. Excavations in 1939 were initiated by a certain lover of mysticism, Edith Mary Pretty, who had heard enough stories from local old timers about gold hidden in mounds and who dreamed of mysterious figures on the hills. This place itself has an interesting history. Initially, people of the Neolithic period lived in this area about 3000 years ago, then people of the Bronze Age settled here. These were prosperous communities that pioneered metalworking, but it was the Anglo-Saxons who brought the greatest changes to Sudden Who. The Tragic History of Baghdad Baghdad is a large and beautiful city of the Middle Ages. 
Science and art flourished here. The city conducted extensive trade and was economically successful. How did it happen that in the late Middle Ages, Baghdad abruptly went to the margins of history? See the inner circle in the city center? There was a mosque and a caliph's place. Also in this circle were the palaces of other members of the royal family, barracks for horse guards, royal kitchens, and houses for officials and servants of the caliph. In the 8th century AD, caliph of the Abbasids, Almanzar, sailed along the Tigris River several times in search of a suitable place for the capital. As a result, he decided to build a city on the Tigris, but in the immediate vicinity of the Euphrates, to actively trade using the advantages of both rivers at once. In the 9th century, Baghdad becomes the leader of the Arab world. Crafts and trade flourish here. Baghdad traded with Europe, India, and Arabia, but merchants from very distant countries also came here. It is known that the Ras also traded in Baghdad. Traders came from the shores of the distant Lake Ladoga. In the 13th century, it was plundered by the Mongols. It took them only 12 days of siege to take Baghdad. The Mongols had the best Chinese siege engineers at their disposal, who them captured during the conquest of China. Baghdad had about a million inhabitants, but the Mongols did not spare anyone. This was their principle. If the city did not surrender, then they sought to completely destroy the population in order to keep everyone else at bay. Usually only artisans and blacksmiths were left alive. The Mongols took them and used them inside their country because they themselves were not engaged in crafts. The Mongols destroyed and burned down the Baghdad House of Wisdom. Scientific works from all over the world were kept here. Here was the largest library of the Middle Ages. For centuries, people have been recording and accumulating knowledge, and the Mongols burned it all down overnight. The Mongols captured the Caliph and he died of hunger in prison. His family managed to escape to Cairo and rule the country from there. However, Baghdad has since begun to fade. And again, it was never able to come close to the glory that surrounded the city for 500 years before the invasion of the Mongol horde. Dima Nisi 2005 a long-term biomolecular study by Georgian scientists and their foreign colleagues confirmed that the world's oldest DNA, extracted from the remains of an animal, was found in the southeast of Georgia, in the ancient settlement of Dimanisi, located 90 kilometers from Tbilisi in the Kvimo Kartli region. From the tooth animal of a rhinoceros found in Dimanisi, scientists were able to extract important genetic information, which is about 1.77 million years old. This is the oldest DNA recovered from the remains of an animal, which is a million years older than information previously known about DNA taken 700,000 years ago from a horse on Yukon Island in northwestern Canada. Ancient men and the creatures that evolved into modern Homo sapiens have been studied for many years. It would seem that today there are no white spots left in the history of our evolution, but an almost 2 million year old skull found in the Georgian city of Dimanisi made archaeologists and historians think. It represents the remains of the Homo erectus species, which migrated from Africa, and confirms the hypothesis that these species stand separately in the evolutionary chain. Jamestown 2013 the site of what once was Jamestown, the first permanent British settlement in North America, has recently unearthed the remains of Gabriel Archer, one of the leaders of the colony. This discovery in itself is an important event for American historical science. However, in Archer's grave, among other things, they also found a silver box of unknown purpose. Archaeologists suggest that the box was used as a repository for relics and could be a relic for Catholics. Considering that Jamestown was found by the Protestant English and was conceived as a stronghold of the British Empire in the fight against the expansion of the Catholic Spaniards. The Catholic relic in the grave of one of the founders of the city looks at least strange, and suggests that an underground Catholic church existed in the settlement circle. Scientists have always talked about cannibalism in the ancient settlements of Jamestown, but neither historians nor archaeologists have ever had direct evidence of this. Of course, history tells us that in ancient times, people in search of the new world and riches often found a terrible and cruel end, especially in the cold winter. Last year, William Kelso and his team discovered the punctured skull of a 14-year-old girl in a pit filled with the remains of horses and other animals that the settles ate during the famine. Kelso is convinced that the girl was killed to satisfy hunger, and the skull was pierced to get to the soft tissues and brain. Headless Vikings of Dorset, 2009 
On the south coast of England near the city of Weymouth, Dorset, archaeologists from Oxford Archaeology have discovered a mass grave of decapitated men, presumably Vikings. Radiocarbon analysis dated the find to 830-1034 AD, that is, just the era when the Anglo-Saxons fought fiercely with warlike newcomers from Scandinavia. The mass grave contained the remains of 51 people. They were all young, healthy, strong built. Their skulls were buried in the same pit but in a separate pile. Most of the remains show traces of sword or axe blows that fell on the necks, heads and jaws. One of the men apparently raised his hand in defense and his fingers were cut off. It is noteworthy that all the victims were stripped before dumping their bodies into the pit. Although detailed anthropological studies of the found skeletons have not yet been carried out, archaeologists have reason to believe that they found the Vikings and not the Anglo-Saxons. In particular, the dead were buried on top of a hill, which is natural for the local population and not for newcomers. The Vikings would have left their victims at the site of the battle or murder in the landing area on the seashore or in the attacked villages or towns. Scientists have to conduct two studies of the remains from the mass grave. First, they will find out the chemical composition of the teeth of those killed. As a rule, it can be used to determine quite accurately where a person came from. Secondly, an anthropometric study of the skeletons will indicate the type of activity of the murdered men. If they were Vikings, then most of them were rowers, which means that they can observe the specific development of the shoulder girdle, back and arms. Göbekli Tipe, 2008 the oldest temple complex in the world, Göbekli Tipe, built about 12,000 years ago and located in the province of San Liurfa in southeastern Turkey, is now experiencing a rebirth. The Turkish authorities intend to turn it into a world-class archaeological center, and 2019 has been declared the year of Göbekli Tipe in Turkey. The complex was discovered relatively recently, in 1963, and before that, local peasants complained with irritation about incomprehensible stone slabs that prevented them from farming. Initially, scientists assumed that these slabs were the remains of a cemetery from the Byzantine era, but in the 90s, the German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt arrived here, who attributed the finds to the Neolithic period, the last period of the Stone Age. He called their discovery a supernova and devoted the rest of his life to studying them. Geomagnetic studies carried out later confirmed Schmidt's guess. The structures on Pot Ballet Hill were built about 12 thousand years ago. For a long time, Stonehenge was considered the oldest religious building in the world. In the 60s of the 20th century, this hill in southeastern Turkey was potentially older than Stonehenge, but very soon it was recognized as a medieval cemetery. However, in 2008, Klaus Schmidt discovered 11,000-year-old stones there, which were clearly processed by a prehistoric man who did not yet have either clay or metal tools for this. 1,290 Roman coins in Switzerland Amateur archaeologist Daniel Luding discovered a treasure of 1,290 Roman coins in Switzerland. All of them were minted from a copper alloy in the first half of the 4th century AD, during the reign of Constantine the Great. Before the Roman conquest, the territory of modern Switzerland was inhabited by various Celtic tribes, for example, the Helvetii and Vindeliki, who were curious of the Latin archaeological culture, as well as the Rats, representatives of the Fritzin Sanchenzo culture, whose origin remains quite debatable. However, Octavian Augustus launched a series of military campaigns in 35 BC aimed at conquering the Alpine region, Radia and Noricus. The Reds were conquered by some of the last around 1513 BC, after which most of them were destroyed or sold into slavery, and the rest were Romanized. The Roman period was marked by the urbanization of modern Switzerland. Numerous settlements and a developed road network appeared in it. The Latin language and the Roman religion spread. Cities such as Zurich, Basel, Geneva and Lausanne were found during this period. However, starting in 264, when the Alemanni invaded Switzerland, the Romans gradually lost control of these lands. 
The Germans finally conquered them in the 5th century. Amateur archaeologist Daniel Luding found several Roman coins and fragments of ceramics, which he reported to professional archaeologists. The scientists who arrived at the site removed the vessel with coins along with the soil surrounding it for laboratory research. After doing a CT scan, they noticed that inside the pot, the coins were divided in two parts. Subsequently, it turned out that the vessel contained the skin of a large horned animal. Archaeologists found it difficult to answer the question why this was was done, perhaps the coins belonged to two different people. All found coins are approximately equivalent to one gold solidus, weighing four and a half grams, that is, two monthly earnings of a Roman soldier. Tomb over 5,000 years old Construction was planned on the territory where the burial ground is located, but now this place will be studied in detail by archaeologists. The scale of the burial ground can be appreciated thanks to the drone footage taken during the excavations. According to archaeologists, the tomb is in excellent condition and its size is simply impressive. Usually such large graves were collective, which means that several people are buried there, who most likely belong to the same clan or family. The grave consists of large stone blocks. According to scientists, the stones were brought to this place from afar during the Ice Age. How ancient people could do this remains a big mystery. The tomb was discovered by accident during the study of the lands before the planned development. Now it will have to be postponed indefinitely so that scientists can thoroughly study the find, the historical value of which is beyond doubt. Corrugated Spheres in South Africa, artifacts have been found that are metal spheres. Their diameter is approximately 2.5 cm, and some are carved with three parallel lines encircling the bowl. Part of the spherical finds consists of bluish metal with white spots, others with an outer shell, and are filled with a spongy substance of white color. This strange sponge disperses into dust upon contact with air. The outer shell is harder than steel. Finding researcher John Peter Petersburg stated that the proportions and balance are so perfect that they exceeded the limit of the measuring capabilities of technology. Artifacts are 2.8 million years old. The Remains of a Millennial Surgeon Archaeologists examined the burial found at the site of Huaca Las Ventanas and found that it belonged to a bearer of the second culture. According to scientists, the buried person lived around 900-1050 AD and practiced surgery. On the northern coast of Peru, around 700 AD, the archaeological culture of Xican formed and lasted until around 1375, when the region was conquered by the Chimu civilization. Researchers have discovered large social and religious complexes of this culture, including several dozen pyramids up to 25-30 meters high, for example, the monuments of Baden Grant and Tukum. In this society, there was a strong social differentiation, which was reflected in the funeral right. Members of the elite of second society were buried in deep mines along with a large amount of inventory, including items made of precious metals such as large golden masks. In early 2022, archaeologists from the second national museum carried out a study of a burial that was removed due to the threat of flooding by the waters of La Leche River in the southern necropolis of the Waka Las Ventanas site. Scientists have found that it belonged to a man who lived in the middle second period. Together with the remains, the researchers found a set of awls, needles, and knives of various sizes, some of which had wooden handles. From this, they concluded that the man was engaged in surgery during his lifetime. The director of the Second National Museum, Carlos Ilera, reported that the grave goods of this individual also included a gold mask dyed with cinnabar, a breastplate, and a kind of poncho with copper plates. In addition, the scientists had at their disposal gilded copper bowls, a ceremonial tumi knife, as well as a ceramic vessel with two necks and a bridge handle, which is decorated with the image of King Waco. Monument of Pictish Culture Archaeologists from the University of Aberdeen have discovered a monument of Pictish culture. A team of scientists discovered a 1.7-meter stone in a farmer's field during geophysical service. The slab is covered with classic Pictish abstract symbols. It features triple ovals, comb, mirror, crescent, wee bar, and double discs. According to archaeologists, it dates back to the 5th-6th centuries. The stone was used in the construction of a huge building from the 11th 
11th or 12th century. It was erected over the settlement of the Picts. The find was made in Aberlimno, not far from Forfar. This place is famous for its unique Pictish standing stones. The most famous of them is the slab, which is believed to depict scenes from the Battle of Nectansmere, May 2685, which largely determined the subsequent history of England and Scotland. In total, about 200 monuments of Pictish culture are known, similar to the discovered stone. Usually they were accidentally found by farmers or builders when laying roads. The Picts were a Celtic-speaking people who lived in the northeast of present-day Scotland during the late Iron Age of Britain and the early Middle Ages. Many kilometers of ancient civilizations I'm going to talk about a few strange places on Earth where there is something very similar to modern airstrips, only they were created thousands of years ago. Civilizations of the past could well have aircraft and very different ones from the likeness of modern aircraft to vimanas and saucer-shaped vehicles. There are several places in the world that everyone calls the runways of ancient civilizations and historians are not bothered at all. But now in more detail about these places. I'll start with one of the most important cities of the Mayan civilization, Teotihuacan. One could say about the pyramids with a strange platform, as if for landing, but the topic is a little different. Directly from these pyramids, very close to the ancient city, is the so-called Road of the Dead. No matter how strange it may be, this is a straight road, two and a half kilometers long, which at one moment simply breaks off. That is, it begins in the ancient Mayan city and does not lead anywhere, which is at least strange and illogical. Most likely, this is not enough to claim that this road is a runway, but this is just one of the examples. Moving on, next in line is the Gambia and Yandam Airport, opened at the very end of the 20th century, as well as a runway built right on top of the ancient one. It so happened that it was there, already to the airport, that there was one line 3.6 kilometers long. This line was built from large monolithic stone slabs, which were fitted to each other with perfect precision. In about 1996, most of this ancient strip was simply covered with asphalt, while small parts on both sides remained intact. That is, the runway was made a little smaller than the ancient one. Of course, no one knows what kind of ancient stripes it is on the side of the modern airport. The funny thing is that scientists were not even interested in these monolithic slabs, they were simply filled with asphalt. And the last thing I know about is the stripes on the Nazca Plateau. There are no longer any cities and settlements at all in comparison with the two previously described stripes, but everything is done almost in the same form. From a height, you can see that there are several large lines on the Nazca Plateau, still several kilometers long. What it was intended for, as well as when it appeared, it is also unknown to anyone. Perhaps somewhere else in the world there are these most ancient airstrips. I doubt that any other explanation can be found for such places, except for the purpose of acceleration with takeoff and landing of some aircraft of the past. The Secret of the Ancient Inhabitants of Palenque In Mexico, archaeologists have used a very fine sieve to sift sediments from the bottom of a sacrificial well in the mysterious ancient city of Palenque. The study helped determine what exactly the representatives of the Mayan people sacrificed to the gods. A brief report on the discovery is published on the website of the National Institute of Anthropology and History. The city of Palenque is located in the state of Chiapas. It is believed that it was the capital of the Bacal kingdom of the Mayan civilization. Presumably, the city was found in the 3rd century AD, but the main buildings in it date back to the 7th and 8th centuries. Palenque died in the 9th century the cause of the collapse has not been established. The city is full of secrets and is famous for its bas-reliefs and carved slabs, the likes of which have not been found anywhere else. However, as part of the new project, archaeologists have studied hundreds of animal remains, seeds, charcoal, tiny shell beads, and other materials that were found at the bottom of the ritual well. As project participant Carlos Miguel Varela Scherer explained, all these things were sacrificial offerings to the gods. Their analysis made it possible not only to determine what exactly the Maya sacrificed to their patrons, but also pointed to a wide variety of sacrificial items. 
In addition, the analysis made it possible to establish that the Maya held religious feasts. It was established that the remains of 17 different species were found in the sacrificial well. Judging by the analysis, mussels, land snails, freshwater crabs, white perch, whales, turtles, armadillos, domestic dogs, deers, etc. were sacrificed to the Mayan gods in Palenque. In other words, the inhabitants of Palenque used local resources for religious offerings, that is, all what they could get right on the spot. In other Maya cities, when studying sacrificial offerings, scientists repeatedly found objects that were imported, and often they were brought from very remote regions. The lead sarcophagus will be opened. Archaeologists will open the mysterious sarcophagus from the burned Notre Dame Cathedral. French archaeologists have announced that a decision has been made to open a human-shaped lead sarcophagus found in the cellars of Notre Dame Cathedral, after which forensic experts from Toulouse will examine its contents, determine the current state of the skeleton, its gender, a possible cause of death, take DNA samples, and clarify the age of the burial from using radiocarbon dating. The sarcophagus, probably dating from the 14th century, was discovered under Notre Dame Cathedral during renovation work in the building after a devastating fire in 2019. Apparently, the anthropomorphic coffin was made for a high-ranking dignitary at the beginning of the 14th century, that is, a century after the construction of the cathedral itself. To look inside the sarcophagus, which was deformed from the load of earth and stones that pressed it down, the experts tried to use an endoscopic mini-camera. But this was not enough to fully study the find. It was only possible to make out the upper part of the skeleton, pieces of cloth, hair, a pillow of plant remains, and a number of as yet unidentified identified objects. Nameplates could not be found. Hieroglyphic inscription 5,200 years old Working in El Havi, near the ancient Egyptian city of El Kab, a team of archaeologists from Belgium, the United States, and Egypt found a 5,200-year-old hieroglyphic rock inscription, making it one of the oldest monuments of Egyptian writing. The group of images includes a bull's hat on the short pole, followed by two back-to-back -back storks, Yabiru, and above them, an ibis. A similar arrangement of symbols is found in later Egyptian representation of the solar cycle. The inscription was created around 3250 BC. The height of individual signs reaches half a meter, and the height of the entire inscription is 70 centimeters. These newly discovered stone carvings preserve some of the earliest and largest extensive inscriptions dating back to the formative period of Egyptian hieroglyphic writing, and demonstrate how the ancient Egyptians invented their unique writing system. Huge Stone Balls Archaeologists have unearthed some stone spheres on the small island of Isla del Cano and in the delta of the Dicas River, where they have previously found more than 300 similar balls, from very small ones like children's balls to multi-toned ones and reaching 3 meters in diameter. It is assumed that they all appeared during the Chiriki period, during the heyday of the pre-Columbian Dyquist culture in the valley of the Rio Grande de Turaba. Dyquist society is considered advanced for its time. It created complex social, economic, and political systems. The Dyquists built large structures using rounded boulders, paved areas, burial sites, and round or rectangular mounds with stone walls. Stone spheres are found in rows in former public squares or along on the approaches to the dwellings of the ruling elite and leaders. It is still unclear why and how these spheres were created. It is likely that they appeared even before Dikis. It is difficult to establish an exact timeline because the balls have been badly damaged due to soil conditions, changes in temperature and humidity in the environment, as well as flooding caused by hurricanes and tropical storms. Another problem is the traces left by the banana company that operated in the region in the middle of the last century. Stone balls from Costa Rica were probably made by working and polishing. To avoid splitting. The spheres were ignited with hot coals and then doused with cold water. After hewing, they were polished with sand or leather. However, it is not clear how the stones got into the jungle at all. An analysis of some of them showed that they were made of shell rock and limestone, which were found on the banks of the Dyquist River, which flows at a decent distance from the place of their discovery. It was almost impossible to move multi-toned stone balls without special transport. 
Moreover, similar clusters of poles have also been found in the Volga region, the Komi Republic, on the beaches of California and New Zealand, the islands of Franz Josef Land, and in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Scientists put forward a version that stone spheres may be of natural origin. They could have 50, 60 million years ago in the muddy sediments of the coastal zone of the sea basin. In this case, this should be a seed inside, a fossil, an ancient shell, or an accumulation of carbonaceous matter to which calcium carbonate or calcite was drawn. Vatican Archives Another purple pigment damages scrolls all over the world, but the ancient scribes themselves never added pigment, which over the years ate the text and destroyed the parchment. To get to the root of this problem, the researchers studied a damaged book from the Vatican secret archives. This 5-meter-high goatskin scroll was a petition written in 1244 AD. Marginal notes have already disappeared under the purple color, and some pages have become completely unreadable. Suspecting the presence of microbes, the researchers took samples from the scroll for gene sequencing. Unlike the mysterious intruder in Tutankhamun's tomb, this type of bacteria was able to be identified. However, the fact that these very marine bacteria caused bewilderment because the history of the scroll was in no way connected with the ocean. But the damaged manuscripts had one thing in common – they were made from animal skin. This turned out to be the key that helped to find the solution. The skins were treated with sea salt, which was contaminated with marine organisms, including those that produce a purple dye. Bacteria began to multiply in the goat skin when the temperature and humidity were right. Today, the damage done to many manuscripts is irreparable, but researchers continue to hope that one day they will be able to safely remove the remaining pigment. What is encrypted on the Phaestus disk? More than a century has passed since one of the most mysterious and exciting artifacts in history was found during the excavations of the city of Phaestus in Crete. The Phaestus disk is a round clay tablet, both sides of which are covered with mysterious strange symbols. This find has become one of the most interesting monuments of the history and culture of the ancient Mediterranean. The archaeological artifact became the first known surviving printed text. It was stamped on clay using miniature dice 3,000 years before the printing press was invented by Gardensberg. In total, 242 characters are printed on the Phaestus disk. Each of them consists of more than 40 dozens of different signs. Some of them are understandable. They are a form of familiar objects, denoting, for example, a bow, a shield, a helmet. All signs are arranged in a spiral and are divided into groups by vertical lines. Each group contains from two to seven characters. Scientists think that these are either individual syllables or whole words. Scientists have not come to a common conclusion about the origin of the characters printed on the disk. Despite this, quite a few facts still testify in favor of the version of the Cretan origin of writing, which is used on the Phaestus disk. This is also evidenced by the origin of the clay from which the disk is made. In addition, the symbols or rather their prototypes are taken from local realities. In one of the caves in Crete, archaeologists discovered a copper axe that was the same age as the Phaestus disk. On the subject were peculiar writings. These were characters from the disk interspersed with linear writing, which was widespread in Crete at that time. That is, in other words, the language in which the text of the Phaestus disk is printed is Minoan, not Greek. The Phaestus disk is the clearest example of technological progress in ancient times, which for unknown reasons did not receive any distribution in its era. The riddle of the text of the artifact will most likely never be solved. Only a discovery equal in importance to the Rosetta Stone can help. The principle of bilingualism was used there. Thanks to this, Francois Champollion deciphered hitherto unknown Egyptian hieroglyphs. It is possible that this principle was used when printing the text on the Phaestus disk. Mummy of the Boy Pharaoh Tut Many questions and oddities are connected with the mummy of Tutankhamun. So, a lot of controversy was caused by the cause of the death of the ruler. It was assumed that the pharaoh was hit on the head with a blunt object. Then, it turned out that the damage to the skull was received after death. Genetic analysis showed that Tutankhamun was bitten by a malarial mosquito. Therefore, scientists began to adhere to the version of death from malaria. 
Mummies of two female embryos were found in the tomb with the pharaoh. Who it is is unknown, but there is an assumption that the girls were the daughters of Tutankhamun, possibly twins. They were either born prematurely or they were especially removed from the mother's womb. Dozens of Mysterious Giant Jars at four sites in the Indian state of Assam, archaeologists have found 65 giant stone jars of various sizes and shapes. The purpose of the vessels is unknown, but scholars say they may have been used in ancient burial rites. In Assam, such jugs have been known since 1929, and there are 797 of them. The current finds were made when an archaeological expedition went to investigate three already known, but remaining undescribed stone jugs and at the same time examine the surroundings. The jars are made of sandstone. Although archaeologists have not yet dated the finds, they know that similar jars discovered in the region date back to 401 BC or earlier. Some of these stone vessels reach 3 meters in height and 2 meters in diameter. Scientists have previously found similar artifacts in Indonesia and Laos, the most famous Lao Valley of pictures in the province of Xi'an Kawang. Exploration in the valley began in the 1930s. Scientists then found evidence of cremation inside the stone vessels in the form of burned teeth and bone fragments. Therefore, they concluded that the vessels were used as funerary urns. The theory was also put forward that the vessels served for the primary burial of bodies, and when the flesh decomposed, the bones were buried in the ground. In 2016, scientists found that some burials in the Valley of Pitchers were made about 2,500 years ago. So far, no human remains or other contents have been found in Assamese stone jars. The people of the Naga group living in Assam have legends that they used to find similar stone vessels with cremated remains, beads, and other material artifacts inside. Researchers suspect that stone jar traditions in Assam and Laos are related. Olmec Hats in Mexico The Olmecs were an advanced early Mesoamerican civilization that greatly influenced later cultures such as the Aztecs and Maya. The Olmec culture flourished along the coast of present-day Mexico from 200 to 400 BC. The Olmecs were extremely talented artists and sculptors. After this civilization, there were many statues, stalles, masks, figurines, etc. The most famous creation of the Olmecs are giant stone hats. At least 17 monumental stone sculptures in the form of human heads, which are carved from large basal blocks. The age of the stone hats dates back to at least 900 BC. Now there is a lot of controversy in scientific circles regarding the origin of the sculptures, given the clearly African features of their faces. Zero Day of the Ancient Computer Researchers at University College London, led by mechanical engineer Tony Frith, have proposed a day zero date for the Antikythera mechanism. On December 23, 178 BC, a visible solar eclipse occurred, a rare phenomena that was of great importance for the priests of that period. In addition, the Sun entered the constellation of Capricorn and that was the day of the winter solstice and on the same day the religious holiday of Isia, associated with lunar and solar eclipses, was celebrated. The Antikythera mechanism is an ancient device that was used to track celestial bodies and astronomical events. Sponge divers discovered this mechanism in 1900 on an ancient shipwreck off the coast of the island of Antikythera in Greece. A year later, archaeologist Valerius Stace was examining what he thought was a piece of rock found after a shipwreck and noticed that it had a gear built into it. It turned out to be an ancient mechanical device. High resolution X-ray tomography later showed that it was an analog computer with 37 years, of which 30 survived. Engravings showing the solar cycle and constellations were engraved on its front surface, as well as indicators of the positions of the Sun and Moon. Any measuring system, from a thermometer to an antikythera mechanism, needs to be calibrated in order to perform its calculations correctly. Of course, the ancient mechanism was hardly perfect. It's not a digital computer, but gears. But with its help, it was very good to predict solar and lunar eclipses. Ancient Leather Shoe 
On one of the mountain passes while exploring the Hestfoni ice spot, archaeologists from Norway discovered many artifacts, among which is an ancient leather shoe. The researchers found that many factors indicate the presence of horses in the territory of the finds. It is assumed that the ancient local pastoralists used this path during seasonal movements. This is confirmed by three ancient paths found by archaeologists. Surprisingly, the path of the ancestors are marked with stone markers. Also found in the research area were several horseshoes, one of which turned out to be about 700 years old, as well as an ancient leather shoe dating from approximately the 3rd to 4th centuries AD. Scientists have also found the remains of a stone shelter, tools for hunting deer, as well as parts of a bow and arrow. It is noted that all the finds were recorded gradually, as the process of glacier melting took place. Who knows what secrets are hidden in the ice blocks? Broken Nose of Ancient Statues the most common question asked by visitors of Egyptian holes and museums around the world is why do statues have broken noses? It may seem inevitable that as the millennia pass, an ancient artifact will show signs of damage, but careful observation reveals a widespread pattern of deliberate destruction. For as it turns out, there is a complex set of reasons why most of Egyptian art was damaged. There were many political, religious, personal and criminal motives for acts of vandalism. So the difference between accidental damage and deliberate vandalism is quite definable. It is important to note that the ancient Egyptians attributed important abilities to depictions of the human form. They believed that the essence of a deity could dwell in the image of that deity, or in the case of mere mortals, a part of the essence of that diseased person could dwell in a statue depicting him. The damaged body part can no longer do its job. Without the nose, the spirit of the statue stops breathing, so this effectively kills it. In the era of the pharaohs, there was a clear understanding of what sculpture was supposed to do. Even if the petty tomb robber was mainly interested in stealing precious objects, he was also concerned that the disease might take revenge if his image was not mutilated, killed. The destruction of statue noses on a large scale was primarily political. Defacing statues helped ambitious rulers rewrite history in their favor. The purposeful precision of the chisels suggests that the vandals were skilled workers trained and hired for this very purpose. The understanding of statues and the reliefs has changed over time as cultural mores have changed. During the early Christian period in Egypt, between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD, the local gods who inhabited the sculptures were feared as pagan demons. Statues were attacked. Their noses and mouth were beaten off in order to neutralize. Yes, religion was new, but the fears and methods of struggle were old. A symbol of these fears and a demonstration of these methods is the Great Sphinx at Giza, the face of which the successors of the Christians, the Muslims, disfigured by depriving the nose. Ancient Goddess Statue in Croatia, archaeologists have unearthed a damaged statue believed to be the goddess Venus dating from the 2nd century. She was taken to the Museum of the Motherland in Biograd, where the statue of a Roman naked girl, discovered in Zeder, will be preserved and studied in detail. So, the statue is large, about 180 centimeters in height, but only a part of the statue has survived, from knees to waist. The pose of the girl resembles the headless and armless statue of Venus, the conqueror with Eros which is kept in the Archaeological Museum of Split. The statue of Venus discovered in the 18th century in the palace of the Emperor Diocletian in Seoling, and has also has its right knee bent and its leg slightly forward. Zeder, where part of the statue of a naked girl was found, was a prosperous city during the era of the Roman Empire. She was found in the ruins of a local luxury villa. Researchers believe that one of the wealthy residents of the city could live in this house. It is possible that this statue adorned the atrium of the villa. Archaeologists have discovered that the floor of the house was made of marble, approximately 260 square meters area. The walls of the villa are also lined with gray marble. The first navigation charts in the world. We are all used to the fact that modern maps are always at our fingertips, literally. We also remember the paper maps we used before everyone had smartphones. And of course, in the movies we have seen what ancient paper maps look like. But the first map appeared long before the advent of paper, and the idea of the world was not at all the one we are used to. 
the oldest navigation map, the riddle of which scientists still cannot solve. This find was made at the end of the 19th century during excavations in ancient Mesopotamia. Then several thousand clay tablets were discovered, and this find became a sensation. They are well enough preserved for scientists to study the inscriptions on them, and yet they date back to the 6th century BC. The tablets contain a huge amount of information important for history, and this discovery allowed scientists to fill in the gaps in the history of the ancient world. Then Babylon was at the peak of its heyday, so such finds are extremely valuable for historians. But among all the tablets, scientists have singled out only one. It shows a map of the ancient world. Many scientists involved in the decoding talked about what exactly was written on the tablet. The uniqueness of the found map is that it shows the entire territory that was familiar to ancient people and not a map of the area. We can look at how ancient people imagined the world and what places they knew. The drawing of the map is a circle that denotes the earth and around it the water. Small circles probably depicted cities and triangles mountains. There are also names of places on the map, which of course are different from those we know. For example, the world ocean is called bitter waters here, and the place that is called swamp is most likely the mouth of the Shad el Arab river. The ancient people who created this map assumed that the earth consists of four endless coasts of the earth. Of course, there were inaccuracies in the map, but the very fact that a map of the world appeared long before our era is amazing. By the way, the map itself says that it was a copy of an even more ancient map, which dates back to the 9th century BC. The reverse side of the tablet raises many questions, the answers to which scientists have not yet found. This side lists all the animals that ancient people knew, but only two species of them lived in this territory. Also on this side is the myth of how Marduk, the chief god, cast down all the others into the underworld. It also describes the reign of King Sargon I. This map has become a cultural heritage of the whole world, and it is difficult to overestimate its contribution to the restoration of ancient history. All clay tablets are still being studied by scientists who are trying to unravel their meaning and translate the inscriptions completely. Great Great Grandson of the Legendary Indian Chief Paleogeneticists in the United States have extracted DNA from the scalp of leader Sitting Bull, who lived in the 19th century and confirmed that the American Ernie Lapointe is the great great grandson of one of the most famous Indians. According to one of the authors of the study, Professor Aske Vilaslev of the University of Cambridge, scientists were able to extract a fairly large amount of genetic material from Sitting Bull's hair and compare it with samples of the genomes of modern representatives of the Sioux Indians. Sitting Bull was one of the iconic figures in the history of the confrontation between the North American Indians and the United States. He was one of the leaders of the Sioux Tribal Alliance in the early 1860s and inflicted a number of defeats on the regular army and volunteer units of the United States. Sitting Bull won his biggest victory in 1876 at the Battle of the Little Big Home, defeating the army of General George Custer. Historians do not have exact data on the resting place of the sitting bull who was killed in 1890, and the family ties of the leader with the descendants were also unknown. Despite the difficulties associated with extracting DNA from the hair, scientists were able to decipher 0.8% of the genome of the legendary Indian chief and confirm that Ernie Lapointe is indeed Sitting Bull's maternal great-great-grandson. Researchers hope to find other descendants of the leader in the future as well as pinpoint the location of his remains. Roman Ballista Nuclei in the late 1980s, several stone walls were discovered on the border between Israel and Syria. Ballista, a throwing machine from the time of the Roman Empire. With their help, at the beginning of our era, the ancient city of Gamla was destroyed. In total, 9,000 people died then. Some were killed and some threw themselves into the gorge, preferring voluntary death to captivity. In 2015, an unidentified person left a bag in the courtyard of the Israel Museum. It contained two ballista balls and a note. These are ballista balls from Gamla. I stole them in July 1995 while excavating and they brought me nothing but trouble. Please don't steal antiques. Relics of Pompeii 
According to the legends, Pompeii was cursed by the gods after some of the holy places were destroyed by the Roman legionnaires. The current caretaker of Pompeii, Massimo Osana, receives about 100 parcels a year, which contain relics stolen from here by tourists, pieces of mosaics or statues. Almost every parcel is accompanied by a letter that tells about the troubles faced by the thieves. One thief from Spain returned as many as five packages of artifacts, claiming that the curse befell his entire family. Osana even created an exhibition of these items called What I Brought from Pompeii. Ring of Cenician Cenician's ring was found in Britain in the late 1700s. It is very large, weighs 12 grams, has a peculiar design and an inscription in Latin. Cenician, live in peace with God. A few decades later, an ancient clay tablet was found that was related to the ring. The inscription on it was made by a certain Roman named Sil Silvian, who complained to the god Nodens that his ring had been stolen by Cenician. The tablet said, he who bears the name of Cenician will not have a single grain of health until he returns the ring to the Temple of Nodens. To many, these details will sound familiar. Oxford University professor and aspiring author John Ronald Rural Tolkien was intimately familiar with the story of the cursed ring and used it in his novel The Lord of the Rings. 1500-year-old curse the so curse of the dancer is written on a lead plate. The artifact dates back to the 6th century AD. This plate was found around the 1950s by a group of archaeologists from Italy in an ancient theater in what is now Israel. Only more than 60 years later, with the help of reflectance transformation imaging technology, Professor Attilio Mastrochinke was able to restore the text of the curse. The scientists photographed the artifact from different angles in different lighting conditions and then combined the pictures using the program. The curse in Greek was addressed to the famous dancer Mana, who performed at the theater of Caesarea. The offender called on the demons to send misfortune to the artist. Tie your feet together, prevent Mana from dancing, close her eyes, tie her hands and feet, which should be relaxed when Mana dances in the theater. Experts believe that the author of the curse was driven by hostility or competition for some kind of reward. It is noteworthy that the enemy asks for help from several gods, including Thoth, the ancient Egyptian god of magic and wisdom. He also asks for sky demons, air demons, earth demons, underworld demons, sea and river demons, spring demons to cause trouble for mana. This cursed tablet confirms that the Christianization of the Roman Empire did not stop the pernicious magical arts. On the contrary, they spread more and more and became more sophisticated. Mary Whip Captain James Reddy Clendon was one of the first European settlers in New Zealand. He promoted dialogue between the indigenous Maori people and the European colonialists, was the chairman of the First Bank of, of New Zealand and the first U.S. consul in the country. The Clendon House Museum contains many items and artifacts, many of which once belonged to the Maori tribe. Apparently, the thief who once climbed into the museum did not know that all Maori artifacts bring a curse to those who mistreat them. He stole a Maori web with a handle made from whalebone. The stolen thing returned to the museum a month later. It was personally handed over by a friend of the thief, saying that before that, the gates to hell had opened. All misfortunes fell upon him. The thief was never charged given that the web returned and the thief had already been punished by some higher court. Carving from Egypt An unknown person from Germany in 2004, during a trip to Egypt, broke off a piece of stone with carvings and hieroglyphs in the tomb. Soon the piece returned to its place, and only another person bought it, since the tomb raider had already died. Shortly after returning from the trip, the man was paralyzed, a fever set in, and a week later he died. The artifact was returned in the hope of freeing the soul of the deceased from the curse, as well as in order to save his family members from possible misfortunes. Stones from the Battle of Gettysburg 
Like the caretaker of Pompeii, museum attendants at Gettysburg, USA, receive dozens of parcels a year containing twigs, stones, and other memorabilia stolen from the site of the famous Battle of the Negro Liberation War. Parcels are accompanied by letters in which would-be thieves complain about the misfortunes that have fallen on them, injuries, illnesses, divorces. One souvenir lover lost his entire family, home, and went to prison for nine years on false chargers. Park rangers are now warning visitors, while you might want to take a little piece of history home, it's best to leave the relics where they are. Virginia Cemetery Tombstones the cemetery in the mining town of Virginia City in Nevada, USA, was built in 1867. And then the stone tombstones began to disappear here. Local residents dragged them off to use household in their gardens and homes. However, there are persistent rumors in the town that the robbers and their descendants will then be sure to face misfortunes, from financial problems to death. Many return the gravestones stolen by their distant ancestors in the hope of good luck in business. Holy Grail of the Nazis In 2001, a Bavarian diver found a pot made of 10.5 kilograms of gold at the bottom of the local lake Himsey, 70 kilometers east of Munich. The artifact had value in itself, but the researchers were confused by the coinage made in the style of Celtic counterparts 2000 years ago. In particular, scientists were well aware of the so-called Gunnestrup pot discovered in 1891 in the Danish peat box, a superbly preserved silver vessel with rich Celtic decoration. It has been dated to the first millennium BC. However, after the examination, it was found that the pot from Himsey was made relatively recently, more likely in the 1930s. Further, it turned out that a certain Alfred Knotts, a jeweler of the Munich company Theodor Haydn, told in the 1960s before his death that in the early 1930s he made a certain golden pot weighing about 10 kilograms by order of Albert Pitch, a major industrialist and director of the Elektrochemische Werke Munich. Pitch, a staunch Nazi and a supporter of Hitler, eventually received the high title of Werwirtschaftführer, leader of the war economy, which was given to the heads of the most important enterprises of the Third Reich. Apparently, it was he who ordered the discovery in Lake Himsey. It is not clear how it ended up at the bottom of the reservoir, but it is known that on the shores of the lake, it was planned to build a monumental complex of the higher school of the NSDAP, the main and most elite Nazi university, which was to become the leading educational and scientific center of the entire Third Reich. It is possible that the pot, made in the image and likeness of the ancient Celtic vessels could be intended for this organization. The Nazis knew a lot about this kind of artifacts with a semi-esoteric function. The Gango Gohu is an ancient community in Kenya. Local skilled craftsmen carve hardwood figures called the Gango. They not only personify the owner of the dead tribesmen, but also embody the spirits of the dead. The Gangos are priced in the West as art and can be sold for a high price. However, stolen the Gangos carry a curse, and not for thieves, but for the Gohu tribe itself. The Gango must constantly make sacrifices, and they must never disappear from the place where they are installed. Anthropologists have discovered that after several statues went missing, the tribe claimed that this fact was the cause of many years of drought and unexpected death of some members of the community. After several years of searching for the stolen Vigango, some of them were returned to Kenya. Moreover, they were brought to Goha in iron cages as a guarantee that Vigango would not be stolen again. Stone Ram Hats Egyptian archaeologists are completing large-scale excavations on the Avenue of the Sphinxes, a 3,000-year-old road that connects the Karnak and Luxor temples. The 2,700-meter alley was built by Pharaoh Amenhotep III in the 12th century BCNS. Once it included more than 1,200 statues and was of great ritual significance. Over time, it was covered with sand and many of the statues were damaged. Excavations in the area of the Karnak temple have been going on since the 1940s 
problems with lawn breaks. In 2010, Egypt decided to tidy up the site and open it up to tourists. By 2020, the territory has been explored by 98%. By this time, many ancient artifacts were discovered here, including many of the lost ram-headed sphinxes. In ancient Egypt, the ram was a symbol of Amon Ra, the patron saint of power, energy and fertility. Installed next to the necropolises, the ram-headed sphinxes also acted as guards, silently calling for awe-inspiring silence. Three more hats of rams were recently found. One of them is dedicated to King Amenhotep III. It has a horn, an eye, and a hole in which a cobra is placed. It is known that the crown of Amenhotep III had holes for a snake. The restorers will return the hats to their places, so that they again turn into mythological sphinxes located on both sides of the alley. Scientists call this ancient road an open-air museum and now work on its restoration has entered the final stage. Soon, presumably in November, the open the opening ceremony of this monument will take place. Village 70 million years old This story is rather dark, strange and mysterious. Was an underground settlement 70 million years old really found in Belgium? And who lived in it? Let's start in order. A very religious artist, Robert Garcia, fascinated by the Bible and ancient civilizations, decided to build a fairy castle with biblical characters in the village of Eben Emael in the province of Henningoven, Belgium. It took Robert 15 years to build what he had conceived, and today the castle serves as a museum dedicated to the art of Garci and his archaeological finds. Garci Castle has seven levels, five levels above the ground and two levels below the ground. The structure itself is 12 meters square on each side, supported by four towers at each corner. Garci deliberately designed the castle to match ancient measurement systems. Each dimension in the tower is symbolic. The constructed masterpiece Ebenezer is a personification of humanity described in the Book of Revelations. Four giant statues of biblical creatures are erected on the tops of the towers – an eagle, a bull, a lion and a man. The interior of the castle is filled with biblical, archaeological, paleontological and geological works by Garci. So, during construction, while digging a pit under the foundation, Garci's builders discovered a whole network of tunnels, more than a hundred fossils and what is most incredible, underground, not far from the construction site, cave structures similar to a village in a layer set 70 million years old. In general, there are a lot of underground tunnels in Belgium, and some of them are so long that they have not yet been fully explored, while preserved remains of Mosasaur skull were also found there. When Garcia explored the nearby underground flint mines and tunnels, he found many stone toys and figurines. Some look like stone dolls made of rounded flat stones with engraving. They all look very primitive and unlike what ordinary archaeologists are used to. Garcia scanned the underground village and discovered straight walls, tables, benches, and decorative ornaments carved into the walls. It looked like an ordinary village with trees, only this one was underground. Above the village are three layers of oceanic sediments, which indicates that Belgium was covered by the ocean three times. The layer where the underground village is located is 70 million years old. Of course, this is a controversial archaeological discovery, because the cave village could have been excavated much later. It might be interesting for scientists these days to explore an ancient underground village in Belgium, but it's too late. By a strange coincidence, the village was destroyed by an explosion in in mind before it could be explored. Why was this opening closed? Why didn't anyone want to explore this place? And why were these cave structures clearly deliberately destroyed? A version suggests itself that this place was known to archaeologists, but apparently the finds did not fit into the modern officially accepted interpretation of ancient history, and when the village was accidentally discovered, it was simply destroyed. Petrified Forest in the Petrified Forest National Park of Petrified Trees in Arizona, USA, the temptation to profit from a souvenir is very great, because species of ancient trees are lying around everywhere. However, tourists then return many of them back, accompanying the parcels with desperate letters. They even published a brochure with the most interesting messages from souvenir lovers. After returning home, we first learned that our mother had kidney failure. As soon as we got home, we had an accident. There was a gas explosion in our house and we had nowhere to live. So please take this piece of wood back before we have any more misfortune. So the curses of different cultures act the same way. Various misfortunes begin to pour on the kidnappers. Do you think ancient artifacts can really bring misfortune and grief to the family? Old Dubai Gorge in Tanzania one of the world's most important archaeological sites isn't a lost city or a treasure-filled tomb. It's a steep ravine in Tanzania's Great Rift Valley. 
Known as Old White Gorge, this site holds the earliest evidence of human ancestors. In the 1930s, husband and wife paleoanthropologists Louis and Mary Leakey discovered stone tools in Old White Gorge, as well as the remains of the skull of the primate Proconsul, which is 25 million years old. Then, in 1959, Mary Leakey discovered skull fragments and upper teeth belonging to Paranthropus boisei, an early human of hominine ancestor that lived about 1.75 million years ago. At the time, Paranthropus boisei was the oldest hominine ever discovered. Leakey and their two sons also discovered another human ancestor, Homo habilis, in Old White Gorge. In 1968, Peter and Zube discovered a 1.8 million year old Homo habilis skull at the site. And in 1986, a team of archaeologists from Tanzania and the United States discovered hundreds of bones belonging to a female Homo habilis who also lived about 1.8 million years ago. Prints on the sarcophagus. In 2005, the restoration team worked on an Egyptian sarcophagus at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. The coffin belonged to a priest, Nispa Vershafet, who died around 1000 BC. Unexpectedly, under the lid, they found the dirty fingerprints of an artisan who made the coffin 3000 years ago. For some reason, the ancient workers worked on the inner lid before the varnish dried. As a result of such impatience, their prints were preserved for posterity. They were made public only 11 years later, in 2016, when the unusual artifact was included in the first major exhibition dedicated to Egyptian artists and how their styles have evolved over 4,000 years. Throne of Tutankhamun, which is 3,300 years old the place of honor on which the ruler was always tried to highlight especially. In any culture, he was not only the head of the people, he ruled on behalf of the gods. A special chair, a throne, is a symbol of chosenness and power. In 1922, Tutankhamun's tomb was opened. The throne of this young Egyptian pharaoh was found in it. Tutankhamun died when he was 19 years old, around 1323 BC. The throne is very interesting both as a regalia of the ruler and as a work of art, and like a family photo album. The tomb was not plundered, so the throne has survived to this day almost untouched. The thieves managed to remove only precious stones and some gold details. The throne itself is made of wood and covered with plates of gold. Mosaic drawings are lined with glass, quartz, animal and ivory. So even with the gems removed, the throne is still beautiful and the drawings are as informative as possible. It is the image on the back of the throne that makes it such an exceptional artifact. The drawings are very different from how it was customary to depict the pharaohs. They were supposed to be depicted as imperious, standing firmly on their feet. And on the back of Tutankhamun's throne, he is placed in a nice homely environment. The pharaoh sits relaxed in an armchair, and his wife anoints him with oils. They seem to be having a nice family conversation. The fact that this is the wife of Tutankhamun is understandable because the couple has paired bracelets on their ankles, symbols of marriage. We see a boy, young and carefree. The researchers even claim that he is swaying in his chair. If you look closely, the legs of the throne in the image are uneven on the floor. The back ones are higher than the front ones. One might think that this chair, as a symbol of power, has nothing to do with the throne. But the armrests are decorated with animal winged snakes, and the back is decorated with four cobras with solar discs on their heads. This is a symbol of wisdom. The legs are decorated with flying hats at the top and paws at the bottom. This is a symbol of power. It is not clear whether the throne was made specifically for the tomb or whether the pharaoh used it during his lifetime. Still, the images do not indicate the afterlife. Ancient Frieze Deciphered in Mexico a frieze discovered in Oaxaca in 2018 contains glyphs symbolizing themes associated with superstition and social hierarchy in the Zapotec and Mixtec cultures. Archaeologists from the National Institute of Anthropology and History of Mexico have interpreted the glyphs of an ancient frieze excavated in Oaxaca, providing insight into the cultural norms of the Zapotecs and Mixtecs. 
The 15 meter frieze, dated between 650 and 850 AD, is believed to have originally been about 30 meters long. It decorated the main facade of a structure, most likely a residential building, known as the Casa del Sur, House of the South, where it would be visible from the bustling ceremonial square, signaling political or economic importance. Archaeologists believe that the frieze was partly destroyed by the Zapotecs who vacated the site, based on the discovery of fragments of a funerary urn at the site. According to Nelly Robles Garcia, National Coordinator for Archaeology at the Cultural Heritage Institution, the effigies are believed to have been sacrifices that may have been made with the intention of demystifying the space. Monte Alban features sprawling plazas and truncated pyramids inspired by the architectural style of Teotihuacan, as well as elaborate underground passages, a Tilakli ball court, and some 200 elaborate tombs. It was settled by the Mixtecs during the Spanish colonization in the 16th century. Archaeological research in the area is ongoing. U.S. Tourist Discovers Ancient Jug it is believed that the jug is 5,000 years old. An American tourist accidentally discovered an ancient and well-preserved early Bronze Age earthenware vessel at Cameron, which is located in the Judean Desert near the Dead Sea. Robbie Brown stumbled upon the ancient find in February when he and a friend decided to climb 328 feet to explore a cave known as Cave 53. The ancient jar is thought to be around 5,000 years old and could potentially be the first intact jar found in areas from this distant time period. Brown is no stranger to archaeological discoveries in Israel. In 2017, he took part in excavations in the same area, which resulted in the discovery of an ancient blank scroll, as well as ancient olive seeds and dates. Qumran, located in the Judean desert, is an area full of caves and became world-famous when a Bedouin accidentally discovered the priceless Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947. Due to its remote location and dry air, the Judean desert contains a high concentration of well preserved ancient artifacts. Over the years, the Judean Desert region has attracted a large number of professional archaeologists and amateur archaeologists such as Brown. Archaeologists and historians believe that hundreds of Jews lived in the Qumran area in ancient times based on the number of buildings and Jewish ritual bath discovered. Resin in the Burial Ground Near the river Deben in England, a 27-meter ship was excavated, which was used as a tomb. In fact, this discovery took place as early as eight decades ago at Suddenhoe, an ancient cemetery considered one of the most important burial sites in the UK. Scientists suggest that the ship, with precious metals and stones, is the tomb of King Radwald, who died in 624 or 625 AD. Most intriguing was the black substance found all over the boat. It was originally thought to be a waterproofing agent, but thanks to the best technologies that became available in 2016, repeated tests showed an unexpected result. The tar-like material was a rare type of bitumen found exclusively in the Middle East. But what this bitumen did on the ship is not clear. It may have been exported at the time. Five untouched ancient tombs in Saqqara Egypt has revealed recently discovered well-decorated ancient tombs in a pharaonic necropolis near the capital, Cairo. Five tombs were discovered earlier this month and belong to the Old Kingdom, a period spanning roughly 2700 to 2200 BC. Mustafa Vaziri, general secretary of the High Council of Antiquities, said Egyptian archaeologists began excavations in September. According to him, the tombs were intended for high-ranking officials, including regional rulers and palace guards in ancient Egypt. All these five tombs are well painted and decorated. The excavations have not up to this day. Archaeologists plan to continue them. They believe that they can find more tombs in the area. The largest Roman mosaic in the last 50 years one of London's newest landmarks, the glass skyscraper known as the Shard, apparently shares space with one of the city's oldest hidden treasures, a 2,000-year-old almost surviving Roman mosaic recently discovered. Archaeologists from the Museum of London Archaeology made the discovery earlier this month during excavations in preparation for building work. The team believes that a well-preserved mosaic adorned with the floor of the Roman dining room. 
According to a MOLA press release, the find is the largest Roman mosaic discovered in London in at least 50 years. This is a rare find for the city, as mosaics of this magnitude the rare in cropped urban settings. The original structure containing the mosaic is believed to have been a Roman mencio or luxury motel, offering lodging, a stable and a dining room. The house's size and luxurious accommodations suggest that it catered to high-ranking officers and their guests. The mosaic consists of two panels the larger of which probably dates from, from the late 2nd or early 3rd century AD. The panel is decorated with large, colorful flowers surrounded by bands of intervening threads and Solomon's knots, a common motif of ancient Roman mosaics often depicted as two looped ovals. The researchers noted an exact parallel to a mosaic pattern discovered in the German city of Trier, suggesting that both were the work of itinerant Roman artisans at work in London. Chrysocolla amulet the Egyptians took flowers seriously and gave each one its own meaning and quality. Researchers knew that the color green symbolized growth, harvest, and health in Egypt. It was important enough to place scarabs carved from green stone next to the hearts of mummies, but no one suspected why the color green was also so important when it came to Egyptian children. According to ancient records and hieroglyphs, the youth even wore green makeup. A recent discovery shows that Egyptian parents believe that this color could protect their offspring. When examining a child's mummy, a leather pouch with a bright green chrysocolla amulet was found on the body. When a child died 4,700 years ago in Egypt, malachite was the most widely available green mineral. Chrysocolla was a rare commodity, available only in Sinai and the East Egyptian desert. A similar chrysocolla figurine depicting a boy supports the theory that a certain green-colored mineral was used only by children. Several experts agree that the amulet found on a toddler who died of malaria was likely meant to ensure health and safety in the afterlife. Family tomb with 20 mummies one of the most significant finds of the Egyptian-Italian mission was made in 2019, when archaeologists unearthed a tomb that had been used many times over many centuries, from the Ptolemaic era to the Roman period. Like many burial structures found in the area, it turned out to be looted, but scientists found 35 mummies as well as valuable artifacts, vessels, palm wood stretchers, figurines and cardboard. Archaeologists from the Egyptian-Italian mission explored the territory to the west of the city of Aswan in the vicinity of the mausoleum of Aga Khan III, which was built in 1956 on the site of an ancient necropolis of the 6th century BC, 4th century AD. Scientists managed to find a large tomb, which was plundered in antiquity. However, 20 well-preserved mummies dating back to the Greco-Roman period still rested in it. Among them, archaeologists single out the mummy of a child, which along with the cartonage was in a terracotta sarcophagus. The tomb itself consists of four burial chambers carved into the rock, the entrance to which was equipped with sandstone blocks and adobe bricks. According to Professor Patricia Piancentini from the University of Milan, who led the mission from the Italian side, members of the same family were buried in this burial structure. She noted that, in addition to the mummies themselves, archaeologists managed to find valuable artifacts of that era – a sacrificial table, a copper necklace, stone slabs with inscriptions, and wooden figurines depicting the mythical Bobbird. 1,700-year-old weapons in Norway A group of archaeologists have announced the excavation of several caches made more than 1,700 years ago by deer hunters in Norway. Melting ice also revealed several arrowheads and several skier sticks. If you want to kill a reindeer with a bow and arrow, you need to get as close as possible. However, in the sand gross carrot mountains in western Norway, the hunters had nowhere to hide, so they had to build a shelter. The archaeological team found five arrows, three of which date back to between 300 and 600 AD. The other two arrows probably date from the first millennium BC. For years, Pillow and his team have scoured the mountains of western Norway looking for artifacts exposed by melting glaciers. This particular site was discovered in 2013, and the first excavations were carried out in 2018. 
the researchers plan to continue their search by surveying the nearby mountains. However, this is obviously not the first time that the melting of ice has allowed the discovery of ancient artifacts. In 2011, a passage was discovered that was used by the Vikings over 1,000 years ago. At that time, the team stumbled upon an incredibly well-preserved woolen tunic that was worn around 1,600 years ago. In 2020, a team of archaeologists also announced the discovery of hundreds of bones, deer antlers, and dozens of arrows in the Jotunheimen Mountains, also in Norway, linked to global warming. More recently, seven years after a ski was discovered on the Degawarden ice, the team also stumbled upon a second ski, making up the oldest pair of skis ever found. Stone Age Culture Discovered in China in the journal Nature, a team of specialists report the discovery of the remains of the Stone Age culture west of Beijing, China. About 40,000 years ago, ancient hominids used ochre in these places and made small stone tools. This place offers a rare glimpse into the lives of our ancestors living in the area at that time. The location is in the Nihuan Basin in northern China, at a depth of about 2.5 meters under a layer of dark silty sediment dating from between 41,000 and 39,000 years ago. The team unearthed animal remains, including more than 430 mammal bones, a hearth, evidence of ochre processing and use, a bone tool, and more than 380 miniature lytics. These are small tools and artifacts made from hewn or polished stone. The presence of processed ochre is of particular interest to researchers. We know that at that time, the man and his relatives had been using this pigment for a very long time. Evidence of ochre processing at Chama Bay includes two pieces of ochre with slightly different mineral compositions. The researchers explained that they found those artifacts in close proximity to each other, resting on a patch of redan sediment. Based on the available data, they cannot yet determine exactly how this pigment was used. However, traces of ochre may have appeared on several stone tools at this location. The nature of, those, of these tools suggests that the pigment may have been used as an additive in the processing of height or as an additive for attaching handles to stone tools. However, it is possible that this ochre could also have been used for symbolic purposes, such as cave painting or body painting. One question remains unanswered. What archaic hominides occupied the site 40,000 years ago? Some evidence points to Homo sapiens, although no human fossils have been found at the site. Modern human remains have been found at a younger site about 110 kilometers away, as well as at another site in the region, Upper Zhukadian Cave. However, it is possible that Neanderthals and Denisovans were still visiting the area at that time. Drum over 5,000 years old A 5,000-year-old chalk sculpture discovered in East Yorkshire has been called the most important piece of prehistoric art found in the UK in the past century. The item, whose purpose has not yet been determined, will soon be on display in the British Museum. It is one of four known representatives of this genus. The remaining three, folks and drums, were discovered in 1888 at the burial site of a child in North Yorkshire, about 400 kilometers from Stonehenge. Since then, all of them have replenished the collection of the British Museum. They are now considered one of the most famous and mysterious ancient objects ever discovered in Britain. Relatively little is known about these famous Falkton drums, but a new specimen discovered less than 30 kilometers from the village of Burton Agnes may help researchers. According to The Guardian, this new drum was recovered in 2015 from the graves of three children buried side by side with their hands touching. The artifact was placed over the head of the older child, along with a chalk ball and a polished bone pin. The burial place is located about 380 kilometers from Stonehenge. Like the other three, this new drum, adorned with stylized human faces and geometric patterns, was cut from local chalk. Apparently, it was not a functional musical instrument. This object, like the other three, is carved from a single piece of chalk and does not have an internal resonant cavity. According to archaeologists, it may have been created as an artistic sculpture and may have served as a talisman to protect the dead children it accompanied. Dozens of Headless Skeletons 
During excavations at the site of a Roman settlement in Buckinghamshire, England, archaeologists discovered about 40 headless skeletons. Most of these people were buried in graves with severe hats placed between or at the feet. Researchers believe that they were probably executed criminals. Archaeologists have recently been able to unearth the ruins of an ancient Roman city found at Fleet Marston near Aylesbury, England, ahead of the construction of the future HS2 high-speed rail. The excavation have provided a fresh look at Roman Britain 2000 years ago. Among the main discoveries, the researchers identified a number of buildings containing evidence of household buildings, as well as other dedicated to commercial and industrial activities. The team also found more than 1,200 coins, as well as pottery, cutlery, dice, bowls, and several lead weights. These findings indicate that the area was a zone of trade and commerce. Parts of the widened road may have also been used for cart park and market stalls. According to one account, in addition to having a large population, the town was probably an important stopover for travelers and other soldiers on the way to and from the garrison in Alcester. Finally, researchers stumbled upon a late Roman cemetery containing some 425 graves, the largest known in Buckinghamshire. Among the buried, several people were also beheaded, about 10% of the burials, and their heads were placed between their legs. Headless burials are not not unknown in Roman culture, especially in Roman Britain, but they remain rare. Moreover, the number of people involved in this case is unusually large. But why were their heads cut off? Beheading was one of the four main methods for, of execution sanctioned by Roman law and was a popular choice among legislators throughout Roman Britain. Supporting this hypothesis is the fact that some of these people appear to have been stabbed from behind with a very sharp blade while on their knees. One of the most surprising details is that these graves are no different from others. These people are buried with the usual types of grave furniture, sometimes even in coffins, and mixed with other bodies in cemeteries. It is assumed that the relatives of the victims probably wanted to bury the head next to the rest of the body so that the soul would descend to the underworld and not linger near the corpse, chasing the living. On the other hand, they may have also feared that the corpse might pack up and leave the grave, which explains why the head was placed far from the neck. 18,000 pottery fragments showing everyday life in ancient Egypt. Archaeologists have recently discovered a collection of pottery shards at the site of Atribis, an ancient Egyptian city about 200 kilometers north of Luxor. It is believed that many of these draft books even belong to the ancient school. There has not been a similar discovery since the early 1900s at the settlement of Deir al Medina, where numerous fragments were found. Shards of pottery, also referred to as Ostrex, found in a temple at Atribis, testify to daily life in ancient Egypt around 2000 years ago. Archaeologists have also unearthed most of the remnants of vessels that appear to have belonged to the ancient school. More accessible than papyrus, ostraca were widely used in ancient times to record shopping lists, trade transactions, and to teach writing and drawing to school children. The Egyptians used a hollow cane or ink stick. Such a large number of fragments had previously been found only once. In the early 1900s, English archaeologist Sir Flinders Petrie was the first to excavate the temple followed by the Egyptian Antiquities Organization from 1981 to 1997. However, the texts found were mainly about medicine and medical practice, while these ostraca tell about the daily life of the Egyptians. In general, they consist of various lists of foodstuffs or items of daily use, as well as lines written repeatedly as a student did in punishment. According to the researchers, the vast majority of ostraca relate to the school environment. There are lists of months, numbers, arithmetic problems, grammar exercises, and the bird alphabet. Each letter corresponded to a bird whose name began with this letter. In terms of writing, various languages have been found, including hieroglyphs, Greek, Arabic, and Coptic, testifying to the city's multicultural history. But the discoveries do not end there. Archaeologists have also found pictographic ostrex. These shards depict various figures, including animals such as scorpions and swallows, humans, gods from a nearby temple, and even geometric figures. Atribis is an ancient city located about 200 kilometers north of Luxor. The 30-hectare archaeological site has not yet been fully excavated. It consists of 
a temple complex, a settlement, a necropolis and quarries. There are two temples in the temple complex, one of which is still buried under several meters of sand. A Headless Horse and its Rider the remains of a man buried 1,400 years ago next to a headless horse had been discovered in an ancient cemetery in the southern German city of Knitlingen. Archaeologists suggest that the sacrifice in a horse to be buried with its owner was a symbol of great wealth and power. A headless horse lies on its left side next to the body of a warrior, probably its owner, surrounded by very rare weapons and jewelry. The find was made a few weeks ago at an old cemetery in the south German town of Knitlingen. The State Office for Monument Protection of the Stuttgart Regional Council has been excavating there since August 2021. According to the analysis, the man and his horse were buried at a time when the Merovingian dynasty flourished in the region, ruling over a vast territory in what is now France and Central Europe. One of the questions that clearly torments archaeologists is the question of the decapitated horse. Why was her hat cut off? Some have tried to establish a connection with the burial of horses in the medieval village of Wolfsen, in the German district of Harburg. In 1974, 35 human burials and three horse skeletons from the same period were found. Three horses lay on their left side, facing south-north, and their heads were laid on the right. Here, however, the horse's head has not yet been found. Why did the early medieval Merovingians bury their dead soldiers alone with their horses? Archaeologists agree that sacrificing a horse and burying it with its owner was a symbol of great wealth and power. During his lifetime, this person probably served the kings of the dynasty. The perfectly preserved skeleton of a headless horse next to the body of this warrior is just one of 110 graves excavated at the site. Other graves contain the remains of other people from around the same period. Some of them were found with rich grave goods. For example, a woman was buried with a golden brooch, and some men lay with weapons such as swords, spears, shields, and arrowheads. Researchers will continue to study this place. Further anthropological work will be done on this rider's bones and teeth to learn more about his age and health at the time of death, as well as the causes of his death. The world's oldest drinking straws Eight long gold and silver straws dating back about 5,500 years discovered in Russia in the late 1980s may be the world's oldest drinking straws, according to a panel of experts. They were probably used for sipping beer. Previously, researchers considered them to be septrous. In 1987, while analyzing the contents of three compartments with human remains during excavations of a barrel mound near Makeup, Russia, archaeologist Nikolai Wasilovsky came across eight thin wool tubes more than a meter long with a narrow perforated tip. All of them were placed to the right of a dignitary found buried in richly decorated clothes. Four of these pipes were also decorated with a small gold or silver bowl figurine. These items, which are approximately 5,500 years old, were eventually transferred to the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, where they remain to this day. Experts have previously speculated that the pipes may have been used to support a canopy that was used in a funeral procession or that they were scepters. A group of experts in Russia is now proposing a different application. These tubes were actually straws for sipping a drink, probably beer, from a common can. A large container found near the scene could hold seven pins for eight people. The researchers confirmed their hypothesis by finding barley granules inside one of the straws, as well as phytolith of cereals and linden pollen grains. It would not be surprising if the Macopians of the Bronze Age used fermented barley. The practice dates back over 13,000 years, and large-scale breweries began to appear in Asia during the 5th and 4th millennia BC. In addition, it is important to note that the ends of these straws were fitted with metal sieves. According to the authors, these structures were probably used to filter impurities. In those days, beer was thicker and sometimes contained sediment. They also bear a striking resemblance to those found on Sumerian drinking straws. It is known that the ancient Sumerians of the 3rd millennium BC drank beer from common containers. Finally, so far the oldest evidence of drinking straws dates back to 5-4 millennia BC, according to several works of art discovered in Iraq and western Iran. The remains of a man and his scaly armor 
About 2,500 years ago, a man from northwestern China was buried there in armor made from over 5,000 leather scales. This type of elaborate military clothing is very rare in historical documents. An anthropologist team reports an exceptional discovery made during excavations at the ancient Chinese cemetery of Yanhei, located near the city of Turfan on the edge of the Taklamakan Desert. Since 2003, researchers have analyzed more than 500 burials, finding continuous occupation for almost 1,400 years since the early 12th century BC. One of these burials contained the remains of a man in his 30s buried with several artifacts including scaled armor. This is a very rare find. Another such armor was discovered in the ancient Egyptian tomb of King Tutankhamun, dating back to the 14th century BC. Another well-preserved example exhibited at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York dates back to the 8th 3rd centuries BC. The research team calls it bionic armor as it is inspired by nature. Armor, similar to a kind of quest that could be quickly put on. This is a versatile defensive clothing, lightweight and very effective for army soldiers. Armor reconstruction revealed 5,444 small leather scales and 140 larger scales. All of them were arranged in horizontal rows and connected with leather cords passed through incisions. The armor has been worn since 786 BC, according to radiocarbon analysis of a plant thorn's second site, to 543 BC. At that time, it must have weighed about 5 kilograms. According to researchers, the scaled armor was sometimes worn to protect chariot drivers and other horsemen in Western Asia. The armor mainly protected the front of the torso, thighs, left side and lower back. Its defense on the left side allowed the wearer to easily manipulate the right hand. The width and height can also be adjusted. However, apparently it was not made in China. According to the British Museum, it is more likely to be Neo-Assyrian military equipment dating from the 7th century BC. Some important questions remain. Was the wearer of the armor a local warrior in Assyrian service, or did he steal the armor from someone else? Was he himself an Assyrian or a native of the North Caucasus who somehow ended up in Turfan? Leave your comments below the video and share it with your friends. I will answer all kind comments. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!